how I start everyone. And we are live. Hello, everyone. We're back after a long break for Passover. And today we are with Batya Bird Ovid. And um, I really have a very uh, sweet relationship with her because she hired me to be her graphic designer, like, I don't know, like 12 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> so um so that was really fun she's uh experienced my transition and it's been uh exciting so let me introduce myself and then she will introduce herself traumatic I, <laughs> what'd you say it's been traumatic because i lost you as my graphic designer but i'm excited for you i'm happy for you <laughs> yeah it was traumatic because i i enjoyed working um so, okay, so I'm Rebetzin Batren Grossman. I am a marriage coach for women in business. I love the connection between marriage and business and how marriage affects the business and all of that cool um, interaction there. So that is what I'm all about. Um, you'll hear more about it as we go, but this show is really always revolving around how life affects marriage. And we come from many different angles every time. And today we're gonna be talking about what it's like to have different husbands and how that affects your marriage in different ways. Um, and hi, Nicole. Okay, so Batya, please introduce yourself. Tell everybody why you're so awesome and uh, why they have to know you. That's very sweet, Batya. Thank you for the introduction. Um, so my name is Batya Bird Oved, and I had the schools of being um, Madhan's employer for a while. I come from a Russian atheist scientific background and um, I became a very good, you know, Russian student of life, which basically means you have to learn um, one instrument and uh, you have to do dance of some kind very, very well, competitively, of course and uh, make a lot of money in some intellectual field. So I became a corporate lawyer. And um, after realizing just how empty a life of uh, just respect and the pursuit of money is, I searched in many different places, Hollywood, India, all kinds of places for what in the world I was doing here in life. And uh, eventually I came to Jerusalem and found my purpose, my calling, my husband, and um, eventually, decided to use that ambition and drive for success and meld it with my drive for spirituality and changing the world and helping the world and the Jewish people by starting an organization called westernwallprayers.org. And it basically sends Talmide Chachamim, people in learning, very pious people in the old city and in Jerusalem, to the Western Wall every single day for 40 days to pray for people around the world. It's a very famous segula. Um, the word segula usually doesn't have a good connotation, but basically what it just means well, is something that causes something English else. <clears throat> yeah, translate it into English also, because people don't know what segula is in Hebrew. Right. So segula, many people say it's like a Kabbalistic concept, a, an X that causes a Y, so to speak. Um, you know, some people will say if you put a brick in an oven and keep it with your challah, you can prevent someone from marrying someone you don't want. I mean, you know, things like that. Uh, and a segula for a good interview is getting the right earphones. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but but uh, really, a school is just a thing that causes because, something else, something powerful so you could do. I have to just stop right here just for like, you know, my marriage to be complete. I have to say this is like against everything my husband believes in. So it's very funny whenever it starts being all like about, you know, whatever he's like that's witchcraft or whatever, you know? So like, it's really funny because there is really that like very logical you know, side. And then there is all of the things that, you know, people will do. And the way that I like explaining Segulas is, is like, you're changing yourself, you know, you're going through a process, which is why I liked working for you. Because 40 days, you know, going to the Western Wall and praying, it wasn't just we'll pray for you by like the whole landing page was all about you're praying where you are and we're praying where we are. And together it's, you know, we're really changing something where you're going through a process, a transition, a transformation within yourself while you're praying. And I, you know, I've had that when one, you know, part of my story is that I, started praying after my sixth baby was born and praying every single day suddenly 
made clarity and I was able to understand things and what does God want from me? And that's how I transitioned. That was like part of my story of transitioning. So I think it's really beautiful because it really, it's not like magic or, you know, some whatever scary, whatever, I don't know what. It's really you changing yourself and being able to receive in a different way. Right. When you pray, it basically means leit palel. Um, so that you're actually turning, you're becoming, you're receiving something different. And so when someone is praying for you, it's actually helping you to become different also. Not only are they praying, again, we do, we send them a prayer that we compose for them. And the person themselves gets every single day a picture of the old city with the actual prayer and a request to pray with them. They find out who their shaliach is. It's a process that comes together. It's a connection mm-hmm. between Jerusalem and them. And uh, also, like you know, we ask people also to take on a mitzvah during the time, take on a good deed, something that they can do to change so that the old of them that was praying before and got a no answer no longer exists. Now there's actually a new them. And so you're asking from a new place. So maybe that new person will get a different answer than the one before. But right. um, anyway, I actually find it very funny. People who say they're very, very logical, so they don't believe in the Segula thing. Now, if they're very, very logical, they will believe in it because the Torah says it's true. Just like the Torah says that witchcraft is true. And it's not something that we just see on Harry Potter. It really is a real thing out there. No, everyone says it doesn't exist anymore. I went to India. I could tell you it still exists. (laughs) And not only that, but so if there's a dark side to something, there's also a light side. What do you think Kabbalah is? Kabbalah is changing nature, but through the holy part of being able to change nature, God gave us that power. It used to be back in the day that Kabbalists usually resurrect the dead. This is a real thing. This is, it's scary. That's why we run away from it, but it's scary because it's real. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, no, but like, I really, you know, I, I like what you're doing because there is something so grounded in it. You know, I think that like you were saying, there is a connotation to it that people will say like oh I don't know I'm not into that but really when you look at it from the inside and why I was able to really connect to it and do all that work for all those years is because I was able to really see how grounded it was you know how how it really is a process that somebody will go through if they're in California and somebody is praying for them here it's not disconnected it's not like this like okay I'll just pay money somebody will do it for me and we're done you know it's not like that you're not it, it's so connected and you know my business name is connected for real so I'm very into connected <laughs> They also say, you know, in the Yom Kippur Siddur, it says that three things nullify a decree, right? Charity, tefillah, prayer, and tshuva, repentance. So we use all three things. So whether you want to call it a, you know, charity, tshuva, repentance, um, or whether you want to call it a segula, it's it's the same thing. Plus, you're also supporting Torah scholars. You're basically trying to accumulate a lot of merit to say, God, I'm doing all of these amazing things, you know, please look and help me do more by giving me what I need. Right. And, um, and actually we're going to talk about the retreat that I do, but in the retreat, one of the days is all about connecting to God and being able to ask because that's something that we really have a hard time doing. And I know that, um, when you're able to really grow your vessel and, and learn to receive and ask for the things you need and get in touch with God on that level, then it suddenly changes everything. You know, like one day I actually had this conversation with God in the middle of prayer. I'm like, you know, I think I haven't been fair. I've been saying all the time, like, oh, give me abundance, give me abundance, make sure that I have everything I need. But like, I'm not being very like, you know, telling you what I really need. So listen, I really need, you know, help to get to from point A to point B. And I want you to show me the way. And that week I ended up finding the answer. It was like mind blowing, but it really is amazing when you, when you get in touch, when you're able to really connect. God reflects you. I always say God is your mirror. Wherever you stand, he'll show you. Right. It's amazing. Okay. So let's get into the marriage stuff. So um, introduce a little bit of your right. story and how you ended up with three. <clears throat> I was going to say how you ended up with three husbands. Not at the same time. Right. Exactly. Not the same time. Say, like, um, don't try this at home, folks. <laughs> um, okay. So the first part is really not so funny, uh, but you know, you got to have a little bit of laugh inside every um, tragedy. So 
unfortunately, my husband, who actually was the one whose idea it was to start Western Wall Prayers and um, who was uh, just a beautiful, beautiful human being, um, God needed him more than we did, I guess. And on his 40th birthday, when we were away on a romantic holiday, he actually drowned swimming. Yeah. And yours truly pulled um, him out of the water and had probably one of the most traumatic experiences of my life. Um, buried my husband within a couple of days and embarked on the journey of a widowhood, which I would not recommend to anyone out there. <laughs> um, it is not what you but, signed up uh, for. <laughs> No, no. 39 year old widow of five kids between the ages of one and nine. And I can laugh, you know, there is life after, believe it or not, after lots of therapy um, and lots of davening and lots of everything else in the world that you could feel. Thank God, actually, God put into the world a ton of resources these days to be able to get over all of the crazy things that he put into this world that we need to get over. So, right. um, you know, he creates the Rafua before the Maka. And um, he also knows he had a very, handle, which is, what you can so, handle. Yeah, I don't like that because everyone was like, oh, you must be so great. They, this happened to you. No, thanks. I, I don't want to be so great. <laughs> no, I'm really not, actually, because God gave this to the right. You know what? I always looked up and I said, you know, are you sure you got the right address? <laughs> you think I can handle this? I cannot handle this. <laughs> this must be some kind of mistake because not me, you know, but um, he didn't seem to agree. So anyway, I did have a very brief um, post, uh, rebound marriage has that, you know, in the from world, we don't have rebound boyfriends. We have rebound marriages. That's how it works here. Um, I was in survival mode and, you know, pick someone that, uh, helped me survive. Thank God. But, um, not someone who I would have chosen had I been whole and stable and, and known who I was and been able to stand on my own two feet after I was just in a very, very weak position. And, uh, our, perspective is very skewed when it comes to, you know, who can help us, who can save us, who can be our lifeline after. And um, so I did go through a divorce, which is, wow, I also don't recommend to anyone <laughs> in the from world, especially since a lot more kudos come with being a well, widow. I will tell you, I have lots of charities coming to my door and lots of brachas and, and, and people asking me for brachas and just incredible respect. And the same does not hold true when you are a divorcee and anyone out there that is a divorcee will understand what I have to say. It's sort of one of those like, let's not leave the house and keep our head down. Where when I was a widow is let me not leave the house so no one ask me how I am because I don't want to know. <laughs> I just need to do what I'm doing. I, um, but I don't want to know. It's not about I don't want to tell them. I don't even want to face myself. Right. No, it's I'm a, not interested. I'm on do mode right now. Right. It's it's just and by the way, next week, anybody who is um listening and wants to come back next week, Tuesday, same time, same place. Um, we're having a whole discussion with a, an expert on child loss, which is really very similar with, you know, the, the grieving process. And it's not similar because the husband is, is completely different, but there is such a painful thing that you have to get through. And then when you get through it and look back, you're like, oh my gosh, it made me who I am, but it's not recommended. You know, you don't, you don't choose it. It comes to you. Right. So they say when you lose a parent, you lost your past. When you lose your husband, you lost your present. When you lose mm -hmm. a child, you lost your future. Wow. So, um, yeah. Yeah. That's it's very all different. very different types of grieving. Yeah. yeah that's really different. Um, and then a couple of years later, after a lot more building in every possible self help program and um, finding myself in a new light, um, on my own in a new way. Thank God I did get married from a good place and um, to a great guy. So yes, I have three different perspectives <laughs> of being a wife in business with three different people. And it's very, very interesting because I am the same person sort of kind of. And uh, but I've had three very, very different marriages and three very, very different experiences. And um, all of them like everything in life is really just, you know, Hashem taking you to a new place and opening your eyes in a different way to be able to increase your perspective and appreciation for everything that life has to offer. That's beautiful. Do you want to get into it more? Like how each one affected your marriage, your business differently? So let's say, okay, I will tell you that at the very, very beginning, um, this whole thing was my first husband uh, thanks. Thanks, Jennifer. This whole thing was my first husband's idea, Western Wall Prayers. And so 
honestly, I was very, you know, shoot from the hip and I've got it all together and I don't worry about it. It's all up here kind of person. And he was very much, you know, Shiva Bakr, systems, regulated, organized, on the ground. And he looked at me and he said, you know, where are your Excel sheets? Where are your documents? Where are your track records of all of your donors and everything they gave? I'm like, it's all up here. What do you mean? <laughs> and he said, no, 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 no. It goes like this. You take a program, you write it down. You have an accountant, you have a book. He just, he took me as like this big flowy hippie kind of idealistic person and brought me into the real world, organized, grounded. And, um, and that, that kind of, um, that kind of koach is actually not only stable, but has the stamina and the wherewithal to see ahead in the future and continue and continue and continue. So what was actually amazing about that relationship is we used to, um, I mean, my kids were young then, so they would go to bed at like seven and then NASA would open. You know, <laughs> he was running a yeshiva. I was running Western Wall Prayers. That was when we had like tons of interviews from different organizations all over the world and news places. And we were, people would laugh. We had three fax machines going. We were on, you know, and um, what's amazing about it is I was telling you actually earlier before we started this show that I really feel when two people are brought together, they all of a sudden have like complete access to the other's soul without even knowing it. You know, it's something very, very malleable. You can feel their whole energy. Just as I'm talking to you today, we have a certain synergy. I can, I, you know, you have a vibe and I flow off that vibe and you flow off my vibe. The same thing happens in marriage. And when a person is with someone who has certain kofos, has certain abilities and has certain inspirations and talents, you kind of tap into that place and then you can use it for yourself. So where my husband was so inspired to be able to do good to the world and give out, I too tapped into that part of myself and we synergize together with it. So instead of giving to each other, which some people that that is their marriage for us, our marriage was giving to other people. And that's how we gave to each other because we were so focused outward because that's where we got our high. That's where we got our actualization. That's where we developed our marriage was through the business, which is not what usually happens. But because it was a business that was not just about money, it was about the Jewish people. It was about bringing light into the world. It was about building. It was, um, it, that's the way that we connected. And you know, our rabbi, Rabbi Green says that any relationship that you have only lasts in the next world in Olam Haba to the extent that you did mitzvahs together. Anyone you did a mitzvah with, that relationship endures in the next world. So our marriage was very much a next world kind of marriage, which is, I don't know, it is, it is what it is. It's amazing. It's amazing that Hashem opened that opportunity up for me, but it definitely doesn't look isn't like my other marriages. A, isn't there a book? One of the things that really inspired me was all of the, you know, after he passed away, all the, all the good deeds that started coming out, you know, as like secret secret good deeds that he was doing it was like that was really inspirational um didn't you write a book about yeah. it or someone wrote a book no so i didn't so his sister actually wrote a manuscript and she sent it in and it got it uh, it got discovered it got published and then rav yakov astor who i think is the publisher of ami magazine he's the one that took it over and actually and actually published the book and wrote it to the end and edited it so um yeah i believe it or not i really didn't know anything about anything i um it was just as shocking to me you know <laughs> it's it's just amazing it's beautiful that you know you guys were able to really connect on that level of giving and overflowing and when you do that it just really fills you up you know that's amazing yeah it's interesting i i have to say it's just it was really just him i really i really feel and not every woman is like this and not every woman has to be i'm just telling you my personal experience but i really feel connected when i'm a channel for my husband and so this was his energy coming through and I was just going with it. I love doing that. I love being able to, you know, when you speak, I'm sure you feel like you're channeling Hashem's light. You know, when I'm with my husband, I want to channel who he is into the world. Um, mm -hmm. And it's basically who he is, is just connecting to God and to his rabbis. And then that flows through me and through us. And that creates something different. So that's why it's so different depending on the husband that you're with, because everyone is so different. Right. So, you know, when I'm with my husband now, he is so connected to 
being able to be inspired by Torah, by words of wisdom, connecting with children and just being them and appreciating them. And I have less of that in me. I wish I did. You know, I happen to take care of them all day long, but I have much less of an appreciation. <laughs> really, I'm serious. I have much less of an appreciation and much less pleasure that I get just from being with them because I have all this top end intellectual, spiritual desires. You know, I can sit at the hotel forever and not talk to a soul. I don't need to talk to anybody. But of right. course, your kids want to talk to you all the time and mommy and they want to talk to you about things that are like not exactly, you know, like rocket science. So um <laughs> it's very hard for me to right. like, you know, right. stimulate it and feel pleasure <laughs> with Legos. It really it really is. But um but for him it's, it's like funny. the most interesting always, thing in the world. I always say, I always say I wasn't made to be, you know, one of those like mommy people. I I'm the same way. I'm like, I need, you know, how did I survive COVID by strengthening my business and like being able to lock the door and have these lives and do these things and make the retreat. Like I needed that con connection with like other adults and high level consciousness type of speaking and not like, okay, let's sit down on the floor. Now I've become a little bit more chill about that. Like I can sit on the grass and just like play with them or whatever, but I think my older ones had a different experience than the younger ones because I, I had to really grow into that. So I totally relate to right. that. So, yeah. So now like one of my, you know, one of my greatest pleasures is to be able to sit around with my husband and my kids and just like, you know, enjoy each other's company and just be. And, and that is also me channeling him and his energy and his warmth and his, you know, want for, for family life. And, um, and so it's very, it is, it's very, very different. And actually my, my experience with business is very different with him because I, I truthfully, I'm, I'm very much, um, I'm very much burnt out. I have to be honest, after so many years of, of doing something, I really have to like regenerate my energy over and over again, because I know it's so worthwhile. I had so many other opportunities to do other things throughout the last 17 years. And again, I, I was like, I worked in the top corporate law firm in Canada. I was on my way to, you know, making, a lot of money doing a lot of things. And I always I say to Hashem, listen to me, you have to help me with this because otherwise I'm going out there and I'm going to make money. <laughs> you know? And I know more than anything, you need me here. And you know, there's all these people that need jobs and et cetera, et cetera. And um, so he, he definitely helps to, to um, inspire me. And actually these days he's actually starting a business. So I'm helping him with that. And um I do feel that one of the things that I really wanted to say here is, and I don't know how you say it in other um, in other episodes in terms of like the conflict between a woman becoming successful and that potentially putting her husband into a place where he feels smaller. I think you mentioned mm -hmm. that before, right? Yeah. So I actually, I actually found so many opportunities especially in my first marriage when I was really becoming at, at the very beginning of this, you think, Oh, what a little, you know, are you still doing that prayer thing? So at the very beginning of this, we actually got a lot of news interviews. I mean, Reuters, Yahoo, we were almost on CNN. We had all over Russia. It was becoming, you know, a big thing. And um, my husband wasn't yet successful. He was a yeshiva bacher who was recruiting students to a small yeshiva in the old city. And um, I felt that I definitely felt that place of am I, you know, getting a little too big for comfort here. And um, I'm going to say something I never said. I all of the organization, he happened to be American, all of the organization, I just channeled into his name, into he became the CEO over there. The, all the money went into a bank account with his name on it, you know, that that he was the CEO of this company, et cetera, et cetera. So when the credit cards came, they came in his name. When accounts had to be paid to all of the amazing, beautiful, pious people in the old city, he went out and distributed all of the money to very, very needy people. I was gone. I was out of it. I might have been like straight on those news programs. But other than that, I was deep inside my office without a face. He was the face of everything. And people would thank him over and over and over again. He'd always say, no, 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 it's my wife. It's my wife. I don't care if it's your wife. When you're out there and people are coming to you and asking you, you know, do you mind if you like sign up my brother? He really is in need of money. And do you mind? Maybe you're, you know, I know that someone gave a donation. Do you mind if you give it? 
it to, you know, my, my uncle, he's really in struggle. And he became that guy who was giving out all of this money and all of his charity to everyone. And he became very, very big. And this is before he gave out his own charity to other people. He became a very, very big person. And that feels good. It feels really, really good to have a husband walk in feeling big, important, doing amazing things in this world. I'm not talking about the like, CEO of Google. I'm talking about someone who's actually going out there and helping the world and becoming a macher. And so I just want to say, I, I mean, everyone's in a different business, but I really feel that whatever opportunity you have to put your husband front and center with the money, with the distribution, with with the name, whatever you can do will only help you in your marriage because it's just so amazing to see your husband happier, bigger, getting the respect that they deserve. If you can, I mean, I. But there's there's definitely ways to sit and think. You know, what what can I do? Can the bank account have his name bigger than mine? You know, <laughs> what can I do to make him the bigger guy here somehow? Even if it's only an appearance, and even if he knows it's coming from you, but you don't have to show him. Right. So it's really beautiful. I'll tell you what's beautiful about this story and this example is that you did not lower yourself. You didn't dim your light. What you did was you like you almost um, um, hung your light, you know, like you shone and then you gave him the credit, which is pretty much, you know, the way that it makes it a healthy you know, a healthy way to do. Because what we tend to do as women is when you feel that discomfort that you were describing. So, oh my gosh, I, you know, I work out of the house. Like, you know, when I was a graphic designer, I was going driving all the way to Tel Aviv, having whole day meetings. And like, everybody is asking me for my advice and me for my experience and expertise and da da da. And they're all giving me free food because I'm there all day and giving me presents because, you know, why not? And then I come home with a car full of things for, you know, samples and things, whatever. And like, I walk in the house and he took care of supper and the kids are all over the place. And it just feels like, Oh boy. Okay. Let me just like dim myself, like chill my light, not show, you know, not step on anybody's toes. And so it's like, what do I do now? You know? And when, when it feels like she needs to lower herself in order to let him be the higher one, that's when you get into trouble because you are literally, you know, lowering and becoming less of yourself and you think that's going to empower him and actually what it does is the opposite it creates this resentment like he feels that he feels that you're not being yourself he feels that it's not authentic it's not real there's no you know there's no connection and then you're not you feel it too like there's this like ugh, you know and so that's where it goes bad. And that's where things start exploding because then eventually your light is trying to come out and it's like, ah, I got to explode. I got to explode. And then poof, I'm, you know, I'm going to go big. I'm going to make six figures and I don't care anymore. And I don't care if I need to lose this marriage because this is a real important thing for me. It's my passion. It's my, you know, purpose in life, whatever. And then suddenly it's like, oh, what just happened? Like you just went out of whack. So and I meet, you know, I'm, I'm giving you guys examples from real life. This is what happens to the women who are like keeping themselves low, keeping the sons low, you know, you, you keep it all down and then it comes up at that point. It's too hard to figure out what to do next. And so it's like, okay, that's it. I don't care about you anymore. You just, you know, you just watch. And what you did was instead of keeping yourself low, you raised him up, you gave him credit. Make him to, bigger. Yeah, you didn't have to do anything. You didn't have to work hard at, you know, if I need to work, then, you know, if I need to grow, then I need to do something for him to grow. No, you didn't have to do anything. All you had to do is give him the credit. Say, thank you so much for allowing me to do this. Like one of the coolest things that happens is like, I do a retreat and then, you know, at the end of the night, I thank my husband for taking care of the kids and making the supper and being so amazing and allowing me to do this. And, you know, it's only because of you that I can do this. And I'm a words of affirmation. So my gift is all, you know, words, words, words. Um, it doesn't always work because he's not words, but it is the way that I express, you know, you are a very integral part of this success and this purpose in the world. Um, another thing that I totally related to when you said, you know, being a channel, um, my husband wrote a Haggadah 
And last year we um, we published the Hebrew edition and it was really amazing. And this year we came out with the translation. And right after my retreat, I kept telling him, no, I first have to do my retreat, first I have to do my retreat. And then finally my retreat happened. And then I was like exhausted from like all of that shine, 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 you know, it was like seven days of intense. And then he was like, okay, good. Now, you know, I need to print it before Passover. And I was like, oh, I don't have any time. And I really went like really jumped into it and made sure to get it done. And it was a lot of work and it was really intense, but it felt so good because I felt like I was really channeling exactly what we were saying before, like, you know, uh, being allowing his work to come out in the world um, was, was really, and it aligns with my work. So it's not like, it's conflicting. It just felt like I was able to do that for him and it felt really good. So I was able to really Amazing. To Look, as he goes up, you go up. As you go up, he goes up. You want to go down, yeah, he'll go down do, with you. That's just how it works. It's same soul. I love this example, but really, you know, when we get married in the Jewish um world, so in the whatever, we as Jews believe that you are one soul and even though you're in two different bodies, you really are connected. And so I have this example of like, you have two choices, you know, like when you go up, he automatically goes up. And now what do you do about that? So you're, you know, I, I visualize this as like going up the hill when you're working towards like six figures, seven figures, I'm going to make money. I'm going to be successful. I'm going to, you know, do my purpose. And you're walking up there and you're pretty much dragging him like dead weight because he's, kicking and screaming and then eventually when you're able to get him to support your work and to really change that dynamic instead of dragging him he's pushing you and you're really going up the hill together no matter what but it's a different energy and that's where i you know that's really my purpose in the world is helping people go from one to the other to really change that up because you're going to go up together no matter what like you're going to end up in the same place at all times. It's just the attitude of how are you doing it? Are you going to do it? You know, no matter what, I'm just, just, you're coming along, but you're dead weight and you're holding me back. Or are we doing this together and really supporting each other through it? So, yeah. Yeah. And um, I think that uh, you probably talk about this all the time, but there's a third party that's the, really the most important thing. And that's even though you and your husband are together in this one soul, at the end of the day, it's really you and God and it's really God and him. Right. And so, you know, as anything is happening, as any friction, anything is going on, you just look back to God and you say, oh, this is what I have to learn now. Like, this is my new life challenge. This is my new life test that you've brought to me okay, fine. What am I going to do now? And what am I going to do with it now? And how am I going to take this now? It's not you and your husband. It's your husband is here to teach you all of these wonderful things that your soul hasn't fixed yet. You know? <laughs> and so as I went from one husband to another husband, it was very, very clear what I was supposed to fix this time around, what I was supposed to fix the next time around, and when I could just... <sighs> <laughs> enjoy a little bit of life um so yeah that's that's definitely it's it's always looking at your husband looking back to god okay this is what's going on looking back at your husband looking back to god gotcha i hear you okay and yes. it's a it's a, it's a dance so when i named my business connected for real um so there's two parts to it there's the connected you know the really being connected and that's when I was asking around my friends, like, what is it that I do? What is it so interesting and important? Like that you guys come to me for advice and that's other people. Like why, what is about me that I don't see about me because it's too natural for me to see. And pretty much everybody was like, you're just like whoosh connected. Like you talk to God as if he's like, you know, right here. And, um, and I also, you know, so it's like connected to yourself, connected to your husband and connected to God is like pretty much like, that part and then for real is because you can't be living in la la land you have to be here you have to be in life you have to be doing the things you have to really be for real you can't be faking it or you can't be disconnected there's like there has to be those two parts um and in the retreat that if you guys i keep saying the retreat so i'm going to give you guys the the chance to sign up it's connectedforreal.com slash retreat and it's happening april 26th it's a seven day free retreat you go on zoom once 
uh, once a day for an hour and we talk about something every single day. It's amazing, epic. The last retreat we did blew people's minds away. So I'm not saying this from like, oh, look at me, I'm so cool. I'm like, my biggest fear was that people was gonna were gonna say that I'm full of myself. And I realized that I'm actually not, I'm full of God. Like this is what I'm doing because I need to channel God. Like I can't hold it in. So it's absolutely amazing. So day one is connect to yourself. Day two is connect to God. And day three is connect to your husband. And then of course, like all the other days sort of put it all together. But um, it, you ha you can't live without God in your life. I don't know how people do it. So you, you said like, you know, don't forget there is another party. And yes, there is. <laughs> and it's a really important one because it's what we're here for. And I love that you brought yeah. that up. Yeah, your God, your your husband was just brought to you by God for a good reason, and that's oh, it. Yeah. So yeah. you don't have to blame him. You could blame God, <laughs> and then you could start to work. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And we talk about that a lot on day three, totally, because it's so true. Uh, Can I tell you something? I am. I I don't know. For those of you who know of Daniel Katz. Um, I used to go to his seminars. I remember one day he said that there was a couple that had all of these problems and the wife was complaining and the husband comes complaining. She's this, he's that. Da, da, da. Finally, they said, we can't take this anymore. We're going, we're, we're getting a divorce. Fine. They went to divorce. They went to Baston. They got the get all over. Mazel tov. The husband looks at the wife. The wife looks at the husband or the ex-husband and he says, okay, let's get married. She's like, what are you talking about? We just got divorced. She said, well, you weren't good enough for a first wife, but for a second wife, you, you're pretty good. Let's do it. Let's go get married. So I could definitely tell you that that's true. <laughs> that it's just the way that it is. What you expect and get angry about with a first husband who's the real husband of your children, all the expectations that you have of what he should do and what he shouldn't do and what he should give to you and what he should be like, get you very angry and very disappointed about, you know, the difference between expectations and reality. And what happens in a second marriage is so many of those expectations are gone because he'll never be the real parent. So you can't really expect him to act like a real parent. You know, he'll, he, you already know what life is like single by yourself, taking care of everybody. And anything you get is like, wow, thank God I don't have to do this alone. Thank God I don't have to make Kiddush alone. Thank God there's another person that I can actually walk out of the house. Thank God this, thank God that. Instead of, you know, why didn't he come home two hours earlier? Oh my gosh, someone came home. <laughs> and all of a sudden, so many of those expectations go away and you're just naturally happier in the next marriage. Now, hold on a second. Now, there's also issues with between children, et cetera, et cetera. It, you naturally expect less. Right. And so I can, I can get through without having an internal fit situations that are way worse than what my friends are completely stuck in, which I used to be stuck in also, because I was also a first marriage person. Right. Um, but it's just unbelievable what, what just that so much of our shallow and bias issues have to do with our expectations. And yeah. so when those expectations are changed, when you put yourself in a position of someone who doesn't have and the husband's gone and it's all on you and then he re-enters your life and it's somebody new and somebody else that's come to, you know, help you. Wow. You have whole a whole different set of eyes. Uh, the eyes come from appreciation first rather than expectation. And so yeah. it's just very interesting. I also don't recommend it because it's much better to have a first husband. But if I could only have all of the lessons that I learned as a second wife to my first husband, wow, I would have just had a beautiful, happy, healthy marriage at all 24 hours a day. Yeah, isn't that amazing? That's beautiful. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> Jasmine, Jasmine Starr was talking about gratitude in one of her podcasts. And she said that she went to a very wise man and she said, I can't do the gratitude thing. I don't know what to be grateful for. Like, it's just, it's really hard. It's like a hard exercise because it just feels like, oh, I'm grateful I have a house and a this and a that. Like, I'm not really feeling it. So he told her, Pretend, like imagine that tomorrow morning you wake up and you only have the things you're grateful for today. And she's like, oh, wait, 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 wait. I'm grateful for my bed, for my pillow, for my blanket, for my toothbrush, for my toothpaste, for my bathroom, for my running water. And then it just started flowing because she realized, oh, 
you know? And so like what you're saying is I'm grateful for my husband. I don't care how not perfect he is and how human he is. You're like, sorry to break it to all of us, but like, you know, we're all human and it's, it's a prerequisite to being in this world. So we're all going to have something that's not perfect about us. And instead of picking on it and being like, but he's not a hundred percent exactly, you know, to the T what I wanted being like, I'm happy for just, you know, just the fact that he's here. Or I just pretend you have no one. Just imagine, God forbid, that you didn't have anyone and what that would look like. And you don't know what that looks like until he's gone. You right. really, really don't. Because there's so many things we take for granted in everything, including air, that you don't even realize what would be if he wasn't there. You know, right. I'll never forget when um, when my, my first husband, when I had my first fifth baby, I think it was the first time his mother did not come to take care of the house. And at the bris, all he talked about was, oh my gosh, the first night she left, I went up to the kitchen and I saw a pot out with food. <laughs> and I thought to myself, how's that pot going to get, <laughs> I guess someone should, you know, put that pot away. <laughs> Um, and then all of a sudden it dawned on him, this, this whole area of the world that he never thought about you know, what do I need to do with that pot after it boils? And and all of a sudden he figured out all these things that I do every night that he just never even turned his mind to. And only then could he actually even appreciate some tiny little things that were, you know, in my world and in my head that I took care of in the house that he would never even have turned to had it not been for me not being there. And all of us wives are like that. We don't realize what it is to have a husband around just his presence, what that does to our children, how that makes them feel safe. You know, how that makes them feel normal. They have an ABBA, period. I don't care if he's home, he's not home, he's he's learning, he's working. They have someone. When their friends talk about, you know, oh, my ABBA does this, they have something to say. They say, oh, well, my ABBA does this, you know? And we're always thinking, well, his, uh, you know, his father takes him swimming on Thursday nights and his father or, or, or his her husband, you know, helps with the sponge on Friday, whatever. There's There's a husband. Nobody knows that anything's missing. You know, right. you have you people aren't looking at you like a nebuch because you have a house that comes together. There are so many tiny things you don't even know to appreciate about him being present in the world and you actually having a family that looks like a family, you know, even if it looks dysfunctional from the inside. Nobody knows. Nobody has to know that. <laughs> you can feel a yeah. somewhat normalcy from the fact that nobody knows you have a dysfunctional family, that you look like a normal family, just like everybody else. <sighs> Right. That's one of the things like you were saying about, you know, comparing also there's there's something that is very interesting that happens when people are like, oh, but you're so lucky. Of course, you could do all the things because your husband cooks and he cleans and he's, you know, all so awesome. And I'm super grateful because my husband is super awesome. But like, you know, you don't sit around and see what is actually different about our life. That isn't awesome. You know, you're not really comparing. You're just sort of like assuming and then it's like oh it's not fair because you don't have to cook on friday well i do other things that he doesn't do that maybe you don't have that so it's really interesting whenever we get into that comparison thing you're always it's a lose lose everybody loses because the person who compares and says oh it's just you know you have it better they're losing the person who people think about who has it better is sitting around thinking like no i have other things so like they're also thinking of what is missing and it's like you know, not good for anyone. So it's, I love that you brought that up. Just like, you know, from both sides that when we, you know, we, we can even just look at ourselves from the outside and say, wow, you know, we have, we have something that looks like a family, which says, you know, is a lot already. Even it's a, very big, there are a lot of people who stay in marriages just to have the appearance of a family, even though they don't have a marriage, because that actually gives you something. Right. Yeah. Just that. But I have to say, in terms of the comparison thing, my neighbor said something very, very smart. She's like, nobody can look at me and say, oh, you know, I wish I had your apartment. She's like, no, no, no. You can't just take my apartment. You have to take my whole life if you want my apartment. Hashem didn't just give me my apartment. He gave me my apartment just like he gave me my sick husband, just like he gave me my, uh, you know, hard upbringing, just like he gave me this. He wouldn't have given me the apartment without all of these other things. So if you want the apartment, you also have to take everything else that I have. Do you want that? Also, and also so just maybe you don't want the apartment. The process of getting the apartment, you know, sometimes like we do believe that you can have, you know, like you don't have to have 
bad things in order to have good things. Like you deserve good because God loves you and wants to give you. And so you can have a beautiful apartment and you can have a beautiful life and you can have a, you know, successful whatever. And like, you can have it all, but you know, it comes at a process, you know, that you had to go through and become somebody because that's what it's, you know, this whole, um, um, there's a word I'm looking for, but like, you know, an obstacle course, that's what it is. There's a whole obstacle course that we have to go through in order to become who we are. And we had to go through it. And so if at the end we actually get the thing and we're like, wow, this is amazing. It was so worth it. Look at how much I was able to, you know, become and be, and just like, wow. And then you look back and it's all of that garbage that made you who you are you know, and they would never have taken it. Like they would never have chosen that path. So that's just, you know, it's, it's not fair no matter what, either way. <laughs> it's like, don't compare. <sighs> yeah. It's useless anyway. It's not going to change anything. So <laughs> it'll just make you miserable. <laughs> I've actually learned that the less you think about things you don't have control, the happier you are. Oh yeah. Yeah. If you can't just don't it, think about it, it's just, it, yeah, that's, you know, in uh, Stephen Covey's uh, book, the seven habits of highly effective people, he has those circles of like the things I am concerned about the circle of concern and the circle of influence. And I can only influence the things that I can control. And the more I can influence the things I can control, the bigger that circle gets. And the more I can, you know, have, uh, the more I'm concerned with, but if you're just concerned with things you can't control, then you're just outside of your, you know, outside of your control, basically. I outside believe they call it anxiety and stupidity, but yeah, <laughs> we all have it. <laughs> yes. Oh my goodness. Yes. Okay. So we are nearing the end. And if anybody else wants uh, in the comments to ask a question or say anything, now is a wonderful time to write to us. And uh, if you're watching the replay, you can do hashtag replay and ask a question. We'll try to get to it. You can also tag us um, and tell everyone but, you know, where they can find you or how they can get in touch with you or what you're up to next. Because, uh, you know, you are doing cool things, even though you think you're tired. <laughs> I'm so tired. But I am, you know what, I do have to say that um, I absolutely love speaking. I, I, I used to actually fear it because um, I was always nervous that it would give me an ego, <laughs> just like you were saying. I was really, I was always nervous. I'm like, how can I speak when I'm spending so much time in the spiritual world trying to get closer to God. And in order to do that, I need humility and I need to, you know, get myself out of the limelight. And so the more that I'm going to speak, maybe, you know, the bigger that I'll get, the more ego I'll have. And, and that's going to take me away from God. And I want to go closer to God. But, um, but I realized, and that's where my, my present husband comes in. Thank God that he's such a clear, um, channel for Torah inspiration. And he so wants to go out there and speak. He used to be a Kiruv rabbi because he just wants to share the goodness, just like you want to share the apple pie that you have, or the cake that you have, or the money that you have. He just wants to share God's Torah because it's just so amazing. And, um, and so I feel like I can more tune in to his purity and his innocence and his, um, genuineness also, um, that I'm not as scared that it's going to be about me. Um, I don't, I don't need it at all to be about me. So I, I want to give out, I, I've, I feel that Hashem has put all of us through so many things and brought us, you know, all different sparks of different places that he wants us all to share. We have all this, look at what we have now. We have this Instagram and YouTube. I mean, it's not just to show the vacation that we're on, you know, it's to share each of our life, with everyone else that otherwise we wouldn't have been created. We wouldn't have been necessary, you know, just like everyone, just like the, the men, when they learn Gomorrah, they learn from different perspectives and they try to stretch their brains to be able to get into someone else's head. 
Why? They have their own because there is a greater consciousness that comes from being able to see other people's perspectives all at the same time. What is God? God is everything. God is all the colors all together become white. You know what I'm saying? So, but you need all of those colors all together and then it comes to the source. So we are all the colors of the rainbow and, and the world and the spectrum giving out so that we can all reach that oneness. And, um, Thank you, Nicole. So anyway, so I'm not so afraid to speak anymore. I'm not afraid that it's going to be about me, although Bliain Har up is about Hashem, no. Um, so I, I really, I really just I want to get out. This is, this is the who am I to speak? And the answer is, who are you not to speak? If God gave you all of these gifts and all of these abilities and these stories and the things and the way and the ability and, and your mouth and your voice and like, who are you not to do it? Like God put you here on this earth to do your job. Like this is what I had to go through, right? Like I'm sitting here, I'm telling you, I'm full of God. Like I am not here to share how awesome I am, even though I am awesome. But my awesomeness comes from that connection, that ability to really channel. So who are you not to do it? You know, you you standing around right. saying like, oh God, I think you've got a mistake. I'm not the right person. Like it doesn't work like that. He put you here to do this right. for your job. And I look at it as your awesomeness is not your awesomeness. It's God's awesomeness. Right. You're a creation of God. You're not saying anything about yourself. You're saying how amazing God's creation is, which is you. You're complimenting God when you're saying how great you are. So um, there's no disconnection. There's no separation. There's just your, you are the creation that God, you know, you're, when you look at a painting, you don't say what an amazing painting. You say what an amazing artist that painted that painting. The painting has no, no significance of its own. It just came out of the mind and the hand of the person that painted it. And so I think that's very, very um I think that's very important. So anyway, so I'm doing some Zoom speeches here and there, and I'm doing in-person speeches on Imuna and understanding suffering. And um, a lot of it comes through, you know, the different experiences that I had. And thank God, I think it really raises people up. It really, really does. And um, oftentimes it raises me up because, you know, you just become a oh, channel for whatever people need to hear. And then it goes through and you're like, wow, that was an interesting thought. You know, <laughs> that sounds great. Always, um, always. Yeah. Yeah. This yeah. So it's, it's amazing. Yeah, it's an amazing connective experience. If any, you, you know, if you can find out there something that you do that actually makes you feel bigger than what you are because you, you've you channeled in some of God's light into the world, that is the greatest pleasure that that uh, you can get. And that is your yeyu. That's, you know, the self-actualization top of Maslow's chart if you're, you know, speaking in psychological terms. And um, that's what Hashem created us to do. So, um, so yeah, so if you want to book me for... Um, a share, I would be honored um, to be your guest for Amuna Understanding Suffering. And of course, definitely, 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 when you need to feel those, come to us, westernwallprayers.org. We literally have some of the holiest people in the world who literally I would like kiss their shoes if it wasn't, you know, not Sneas. And I wish I could be anything like them. I'm just so happy to be a part in any of their Torah um, by providing them with a place at the Kotel to Dom for you at westernwellprayers.org. Thank you. Um, or B Bird, B B U R D. Yeah, you're very prepared at westernwellprayers.org. Or you can catch me on Facebook, Bat Your Bird Ovid. I love that. By the way, the thing that came up for me and I didn't want to interrupt you is the moon and the sun. Like, I really feel like I'm a reflection. I'm not, you know, the light isn't coming from me and I and that those are all things that by the way you guys think like oh she's a natural no like you really have to go through these things you have to go through these mindset issues and fix them and figure it out and find the answers because you don't just wake up one day and are like really awesome at making lives I had to go through like being scared of speaking in public and what are people gonna think of me and what are they gonna say and what am I what if I don't know and all of these things come up and you have to deal with them and that's how you grow. And so they don't mean that you just like give up and say, Oh, it's not for me. You become somebody. And I think with the retreat that I did, I actually became that like, Oh, Oh my gosh. Like I just became a leader, you know, and it like caught me by surprise. And I said it at the retreat. I'm like, you guys all did me the favor. I know that I gave you a lot, but like, whoa, I blew my mind how much came out and how eloquently it came out from a person who is scared of speaking in public and used to shake and was like, oh, I can't do this. 
I had to go through so much. And it really is one of those amazing things that if you, if you are, you know, if you allow it in, it will show you, you know, God will show you the way and clarity and just like guide you through it. It's amazing. So everybody should go sign up for my retreat. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm wowed. I just, I want to say I'm not there yet. I wish one day I would be at a place where I can do what you're doing right now. It takes so much gumption and courage and color Thank you. Thank you. I no, think that's you, really, you really deserve it. Thank you. I think that's one of the things that I'm, you know, I'm feeling called to do is why I started the retreats is really to, you know, gather the people around me and like do this thing, like show other people what I did and what to do because I had to go through all of that business and design and branding and all of that stuff. Like I have the technical and the business and then I have the marriage and the wisdom and it's like being married right now in the retreat. So it's really interesting. Yeah. And some, uh, Nicole says- so higher yes. and higher. Oh, okay. So what is one practical thing that you want to leave everyone with so that they can really just get fired up and moving forward? Don't let anyone stop you from doing what you want to do. At the end of the day, if you're doing the right thing, they will thank you. That's it. I don't know why I came up with that. Someone out there needs to hear that because that's the last thing I thought I was going to say, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's all for him you know before i go live i ask for guidance and i say you know with god's help we will succeed because i have no idea how these lives are gonna go and they always end up amazing so it's such a pleasure having you thank you so much for coming i feel so grateful make sure you come back next week if you are watching and if you're not watching it's all good um, next week, we are going to be talking about child loss, and um, it's going to be pretty awesome because the person who I have invited is actually really positive and really happy. So I think that is really fun to see um, how she, you know, was able to grow from it and become the person she is without having to lose herself, which is why I also like you because you're able to laugh and you're able to smile and tell the story, you know, yes, it's tragic. And yes, you didn't sign up for it. But at the end of the day, you're able to connect to God and say, I guess this is what you wanted. So let me, you know, play along and sort of just go with the flow. And I trust that it's going to take me somewhere. So, um, right. I also want to, I also want to say just to validate um, the people <laughs> who aren't quite there that I also was very broken. You know, I had my on times and I had my broken times and, um, and the broken times really didn't look very good. So, um, like you said, connected for real can only happen if you are, you are real. And that means if you really, really acknowledge all of the pain that you're going through and you really acknowledge all the brokenness and that's the only way to put it back together. So, um, you can still, you can be in a place where you're very clear that Hashem is with you. You're very clear that all the pain is from Hashem and you're still very, very in pain. It's not, Akol yeah. tova. it's, I no, know, no, no. Akol, everything is from you and I know this is right for me and I'm not supposed to learn something from this and I'm going through the pain also. Yeah. So and I'll get out of it through you. You can't, you can't bypass pain you have to go through it and you have to feel it and you have to grieve and you have, you know, we have the seven days of mourning and you have to mourn. They don't give you a choice. You have to go through the motions and you have to feel your feelings. And if you don't, it will come back to bite you. So it really is, you know, it's important that you brought it up. Even if you're not mourning something that is, you know, such a huge loss, like, you know, I don't know, just, oh, nobody signed up for my program. I feel really broken. Like, that's okay, too. And it, you know, it took me, you know, for a loop um, the last time that happened. And I had, like, a whole two weeks of, like, I don't have any energy to do anything. And I can't, I can't deal with this. Like, what do you want from me? Like, I did all this work for nothing type of feeling. And, and that's okay, too. You know, so, like, don't think that something gigantic has to happen for you to feel pain. You can feel pain for anything, no matter what. And it's your pain and you're feeling it. And the only way through it is through it. You can't bypass it. There is no avoiding it. 
And so I really, I really love that you brought that up because it, it's part of the process. You can't be happy without sadness, which by the way, is like one of the biggest takeaways from the movie Inside Out. Um, it's a really beautiful movie. Oh, I never but, saw that. Oh, it's so cute. It's like all animated and there's like I happy heard. and sad and whatever. And the takeaway is that you cannot be happy, happy, happy and try to like push away sadness. Sadness has to go through the motions and then you can be happy for real, you know? So I really like that you brought that up. Ah, thank you everyone for listening. Come back next week and we will see you next time.